Yo, yo, yo. What's up, what's up? Welcome back. Today we're working on my operating system. It's an x86 operating system written in Rust. Um, it's starting to have some form of like usefulness. It's got like, it boots, it does memory allocation, it has like a async support for like concurrency, it has serial unit testing, uh, RTC, PCI, Ethernet. Uh, and on top of Ethernet, we have like network protocols, ARP, UDP, TCP. Uh, we've proven that we can write like a web server. We've done some like graphic stuff. We've started handling some input. And so uh, the last couple streams we've been working on like graphics and our keyboard input. So right now, it, when we boot, uh, this is the operating system booting in a virtual machine. And uh, we have this thing that's like moving pretty fluidly. Um, and if I press spacebar, it pauses and resumes. Great. Um, and so we've kind of like gotten ourselves to the point where we could probably try making like a game in this operating system. Um, and so that's what I wanted to look at today is what would it take to make some sort of like brick breaker? Um, so let's look at that. So what are we going to do first? Uh, we have to like think about several things here. Uh, one is we have to like set up like a game loop somewhere. Uh, we have to like probably handle input a little better. So we need to handle like right now we have only pause. Like the only thing that we can detect on the keyboard is like a spacebar press. And we only, uh, particularly we can only process like a spacebar release. So we probably need to handle like holding input as well as uh, mapping inputs uh, from like mapping different inputs. Now in reality, if we're going to make something like brick breaker, we only need three buttons. We need, uh, left, we need right, and we need spacebar to start game. Right. Um, so maybe that's the first thing and we, we yeah, we want to map inputs as well as holding. Then we want to set up our game loop and we'll figure out from there what we want to do. Uh, so let's just kind of like start looking at that. So last stream we implemented this like um, PS2 keyboard where PS2 stands for personal system 2 maybe? PS2. Uh, these guys here. Um, so these are like the olden days before USB. Uh, this is what we have on the back of our computers. I think that we stopped having these eventually. I'm not sure. I don't think my computer has one, but I don't really want to crawl under my desk and check. Um, but I haven't seen one of these for a long time, at least. Um, and these are like simpler to work with than USB. They have like dedicated hardware uh, for these exactly. Um, pretty easy. So we have this driver that we wrote last stream. And... Right now, all it really has, it does like some like initialization shit, right? Um, that's flawed for sure. Like we didn't really implement like full initialization. We just kind of like pieced together what we needed to to make the VM work. Um, and then we looked at this like, we have this like read function and all it does is it waits for, um, it waits for the status register to say that it has some data. So that's this like status get bit. If it's ready, there's ready. We wait for that. And when it's ready, we give it the byte. Easy. Um, there, so where do these come from is, do I have a, did I have multiple browser windows open? I do, here we go, we'll close this one. Uh, there's like these like scan code tables. Uh, here and there are like multiple sets and we're like what are these things like first of all what the fuck is a scan code so there's scan codes and there's key codes um where did i find this before there's maybe it was here yeah this is definitely where i found it so the hardware circuitry on your keyboard is like it has these keys mapped to like two values, I think, like two, like a row and a column. 
And the scan code is essentially like when you press down a key, it like bridges two of these networks together so that like on your row, you have like a specific index and your column, you have a specific index set. And based off of like which values are set, the keyboard can like figure out, like, sorry, your, your operating system can figure out which key was pressed. And so these scan codes, uh, they kind of like historically, there was just like this like one keyboard and these were the scan codes that it emitted. And so now all keyboards after that uh, implement that scan code set, which isn't true. There's a second scan code set. They're like, we have more keys now. So we need to support those extra keys. And our piece of hardware, the, uh, let's see, where is it? I think it's, as far as I can tell, we didn't actually confirm this, but I think QEMU is uh, emulating this PS2 controller. And in our initialization, one of the things we did was we and we asked it to translate scan code set two back to scan code set one. So even if our keyboard, our keyboard, our virtual keyboard is emitting scan code set two, the uh, hardware will take that and it will replace it with scan code set one. And so really, all I want to do, if I want, all we have to do, I should say, is if I want to uh, support detecting press and release. I think we could probably already get that for free. And all we have to do is like figure out which numbers are which. Um, there are a couple uh, things on here that have like multiple back-to-back -back events associated with them. So like for keypad enter, it's like two bytes. But for anything that we're going to be doing for our makeshift game, uh, I think we can get away with one byte. So if we just go into here, and we start like printing out what we see when we press buttons. Uh, we have our like somewhere here, we have our current uh, ball demo loop. Uh, he's just kind of like sitting in the middle of main. This like main demo is getting out of hand, right? We have this like demo function that's uh, what for 195 lines long and it does like a bunch of different shit but one of the things it does is it like sets up this like bouncing ball demo and in the bouncing ball demo we basically just pause it if we uh read that something happened we see key 185 and so i think all i want to do is uh we'll just log the key no matter what so we do this and we say uh if let we print line the key uh i guess we can say match key no uh we'll say if let sum this equals key as ref and then or here we'll just print the key how about okay so if i run this we're running we're seeing nothing printed so that's fucking annoying so we'll actually only print if we see something so if let sum v is equal to key as ref <laughs> Print line the key. And let's print it as hex. Um, so here, there we go. So if I press like left, left, I see that when I press it down, I get four, whoa, what's happening here? Uh, I'm actually getting several bytes. Hold on a sec. I'm actually getting uh, several bytes at a time. If I hold down A, I am actually only seeing one at a time. D, I'm only seeing one at a time. And space, I'm seeing one at a time. So it looks like the left arrow and right arrow are actually triggering like a sequence of, how many, two bytes each? Yeah, and A and D are simpler. So probably what I'll do is I'll just implement A and D for now because that'll make it so that I can only have to parse one byte at a time. And that will make my paddle move left and right. Or maybe what I do for now is um, I move the ball. Instead of having this be a bouncing ball demo initially, we'll, ha we'll move the ball based off of the uh, keys that have been pressed. That's like a good kind of step one. Um, so let's do that. I think there's actually uh, nothing that we actually have to do in terms of like implementation for... Uh, for input mapping like i think that's all kind of ready and all we have to do is like map the codes in our games in our game 
Uh, so let's make a game, like module, and uh, I think this is mod game. One sec. Uh, and in here we're going to have a game class, right? And he's going to have like some sort of implementation. And one of the things that he's going to do probably is going to be able to like construct himself. And that's going to just return himself like this. And, um, we're going to implement for future. So we're going to use for future future and we're going to implement future for the game because this is going to be some sort of like a uh, thing that runs concurrently with the rest of our operating system so we are we know that we're just going to have to be a future of some sort one sec sorry about that um okay so uh yeah we're going to be doing something concurrently um so we could maybe implement this in the future or maybe actually what we might want to do is we want to say like pub async function run and then we can like uh that that's like kind of like a nicer usage wise or like implementation wise uh and so like what's our game gonna do well right now it's just gonna do exactly what our like demo was doing before so here we had this like demo here and let's just like yoink all of this stuff out and stick it in here so this is our like bouncing ball demo and we'll call this a game for a second um, here we need a reference to the frame buffer, uh, which is like where we're drawing to. So here we'll just take in a frame buffer, I guess, and we'll use that from our crate. So use crate, frame buffer, frame buffer, I guess. Um, this guy needs to take in the frame buffer as a reference. And this guy needs to have like a lifetime associated with them like this. And which means this guy also has to have his lifetime associated with him. Uh, which, I th which I think can just be anonymous. I don't think that we have to like name the lifetime and keep track of it anyway. Um, cool. Uh, this guy needs to take in himself by reference. And... We're close. Now we just need to take we need to take in the keyboard as well. So uh, PS2 is a PS2, which comes from our crate, which is PS2 keyboard. Uh, I think it actually comes from IO PS2 PS2 keyboard like this. Very nice. Um. So now I think we actually might need to tie the lifetimes together. So we'll just do this, right? We'll just say, but everything is going to be valid for the same lifetime. And this guy takes in a PS2 keyboard and we pass him in like this. Okay, uh, so this guy needs to have a lifetime declared here. Father's complaining, uh, we forgot a comma here. And uh, we have a couple more things that we need. We need the monotonic time and the wake-up list. So here we'll say monotonic time, wake-up list. And these are so that we can handle uh, sleeping. So we need time with reference to the clock so that we can like uh, set up our game loop sleep. Uh, which comes from time, monotonic time. And we need a wake-up list because... Uh, when we try to sleep, what we do is we halt the CPU and we schedule a wake up from an interrupt. So this interrupt will fire every time like the clock ticks. And he goes, uh, oh, is there anything that needs to be woken up? If so, like let's kick ourselves out of this halt loop and actually like do some work. So that's what, why we need this wake up list. I think it comes from here. Wake up list it comes from sleep, sorry. So this comes from sleep, wake up list. Okay, and so now we have to pass these guys in. So we pass these guys here, we do this. 
and we pass them in like this. So boom, boom. These guys go in here. Shift them a little bit. Replace them with commas. Bang. Okay. Uh, we're getting close. We need to include the sleep module directly. So this is sleep as self, so that we have access to that sleep sleep function. Uh, what doesn't he like here? Uh, this needs to be a wake up list. Oops. And we also need a reference to the RNG so that we can change the color of the ball at random. Okay, hopefully this is the last one. Uh, so this guy takes an RNG. He stores the RNG with reference to RNG. Now probably some of these need to be mutable references. So uh, this RNG is actually mutex protected because the RNG has to like update its state every once in a while, which means that we need to include uh, util. I think it's async mutex, nice mutex. Um, this guy also needs to be mutex protected. And there we go. We've gotten past the like initial compilation failures and we're getting into stage two compilation failures, which are things need to be mutable references. So it's doing like lifetime checks now instead of, uh, instead of like, I don't know what the other word is, but the lifetime checks come after, which is kind of annoying sometimes, but uh, we'll live with it. Okay. Uh, this guy needs to come in by mutable reference. Okay. There we go. So here are all of the things that we use in our game. Um, and now we should just be able to go back to main and we should be able to replace this uh, with our uh, let game is equal to game new who takes in all of those guys. And then here we just use uh, game.run. And this comes from game. Okay, so now we pass in our argument. So self.frame buffer, self.ps2, self.monotonic time, self.wake up list. I think it was self.rng was the last one. There we go. Okay, almost there. This comes a public function. We're so close. We're so close. 54 uh, in main. We have some compile errors that we have to sort out. So here, unused import. That doesn't matter. But it's re-imported, which is a little annoying for it. And then 329, or 389, sorry. Uh, we just need to throw a little mutable on this game so that it's like allowed to be mutated. Now are we running? Nice. And we are, in fact, still running the game. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So let's just do a quick checkpoint. So we'll get checkout dash B uh, brick baker, we'll call it, because that's the game I'm planning on implementing. Uh, we'll commit a quick checkpoint. And we'll say that we uh, pulled out game into struct. Okay, so now we have like this place where we can work with the game directly. And like, so the first things that I want to do is start like splitting out functions, uh, just so that we have like a cleaner, like easy to read game loop. So one of the things that we're gonna want to do is we're gonna pull out this uh, draw circle. So We'll throw this in here, draw a circle. He takes in all of these guys, um, as well as himself. Uh, this is a F32, this is an F32. This is an F32, and this is an F32-3, great. And here we just do what we did in here, but we cut and paste it. Womp. And then wherever we called draw circle before, we have to use self dot draw circle. Great. Does that compile? Shockingly, it does. And do we still run? Nice. And everything's still working as expected. Great. Um, 
what else is in here? Um. Yeah, I don't know. This is fine for now. This is fine for now. Um, it actually might make sense to run this as a... I don't know, as like a pulled thing so that we can like say on each frame do these things. Um, but that's, it's fine for now. Um, maybe, ah yeah, let's do it. So let's say that we'll pull it like some like state. Right, and in his state he's going to have his like ball position color. Right, like this. Um, here we'll create our initial state. So this comes in as like state, this, we close this guy, and uh, we go for each of these and we replace the equals oops, with a colon, and then go to the end of the line and put a comma instead of a semicolon, great. And then we pass in the state here, our state gets it here, put in here like this as a state, like this. And now I just have to set the types here. So this is a uh, replace, oopsies, replace the equals with a colon, and then say that they're a float. I think all of these things are floats. Yep. Uh, except for this one, which is a bool. And this is a F32.3. There we go. Oops. Great. And now we can delete all this stuff. And we can now factor out the like most of this loop into a like pub function uh, service. This isn't a public function. Uh, or update we'll call it. And Maybe what we'll do is we'll like split up this a little bit into like input handling and uh, state handling and then drawing, right? That, that'll that make this kind of like clear to look at what's happening. And then our run loop can just handle uh, timing and running this update when it needs to. So the first thing we have to do is uh, handle input. And so there we say we do this stuff, right? Um, and what goes in here? Here we pull. Um, well, there's no continue here. This pause actually doesn't go here. This pause will go here. So this is uh, self dot state pause now. Here we have this like local variable. The variable used to be there, and we'll put that in self dot state. Self dot state pause. Great. That's actually all that has to be done here. So we say uh, self dot handle input. Oh, wait. Uh, then we say self dot uh, physics. I guess. Right, so we'll say that like what, how is the ball moving is essentially what we're trying to do in here. So we'll say async function physics. And the first thing we do, actually we have to, before we do physics, we check if we're paused. If we're paused, we exit. Otherwise we process physics and our physics is just this stuff here. where we, uh, what are we doing here? We are checking the velocity of the ball. We're setting the state of the ball or the position of the ball based off of its velocity. Uh, we are checking if the ball is, what are we doing here? We're checking if the ball hit the edge and if it did, we update the color um, and invert the velocity. 
so that next frame it'll bounce the other way. And we do the same thing. Um, we do the same thing if it if it hits the uh, top left corner. Or we do the same thing for, for Y next, sorry. Um, right, and here we're going to store the radius of the ball as a constant. And we have it set in here as uh, 0.05 in screen space. Okay, so here we just delete this rad and we place this with rad. Like this, great. Uh, because we're going to be using this in the circle drawing as well. And then all we have to do is draw the circle after. Great. And so then our like run loop turns into... We calculate the start and the end. And we update in between. And then we check how long it took. And we sleep until the next frame. Great. Um, so this is self.state.x, y, color. And in reality, like this draw circle uh, will be replaced with like a draw loop later that handles everything internally, but that's okay. Okay. So let's quickly run this. And we are still running. We're still handling input. Great. Great, 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 great. Uh, okay, so the reason to go through all of that work is just because it makes like this like easier to think about, right? Each of these functions is like short and sweet. They have like a single job, and it's pretty easy now to track what's going on, right? Like our run loop, he's like does some he tracks some time, he updates, um, sleeps. Our update loop, alt does this handle input, run physics, draw circle, and then each of these has like a defined purpose. It's easy to understand. Okay. Uh, so we'll get status, and we'll get add dash u, and maybe we'll actually say uh, refactor game loop into segments. Cool. And here we'll say that we split out game class plus refactor, and this is like around uh, 2751. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is uh, move the ball based off keyboard input. So, uh, let's run the game real quick, and let's see what, like, if I press, like, W, I get 11 on down, 1F, uh, A. Let's map these out. So, 11 is, uh, W down. Uh, so we'll say that we have W goes to 1191. A goes to... 1e9e. E. S goes to 1f9f. And D goes to 2o ao. So this is 2o ao. Alright, and then spacebar. We have it goes from 3 9 to b9. Okay. So, probably the first thing we want to do here is uh, when I hold down a key here, it like spams it. So, probably what we want to do is we want to check the current state of the key and we'll, we'll like assign that separately. So, one of the things we'll do is we'll have like our state will have a uh, direction. Um, let's think about this. Direction as a direction. Um, and our directions will be uh, north, east, south, west, and everything in between. So uh, this actually probably doesn't... Does this make sense? Uh, we can probably have this as like two directions. We can have... Uh, up down as one thing and left right as another. So we'll say that we'll, uh, x we'll have x direction and y direction. But really, this is already handled by like these velocity values. Um. So let's make like a default velocity. What we'll do is we'll multiply the velocity by our like the thing we've pressed. Um. 
so where did we set this velocity initially? This was probably set in our like a state initialization. So we had x velocity 0 0.3 and y velocity 0 0.6. Um, so this was 0 0.03 and y velocity is 0 0.06. Okay, and then we'll have our like extra is going to be uh, either negative one, zero or one. And our wider is going to be the same. Uh, oops, there should be an I8. And they'll start as zero. Right? Uh, so there's no button pressed. And on handle input now, we're going to check... Um, we're going to check... If a button was pressed if a button was pressed we'll set the direction to that and if a button was released uh then we'll we'll uh stop moving in that direction so here we say match key and we have 0x11 we'll set the uh self.state.wider to one uh, we have one e, oopsies. We'll set the exter to one. One f, we'll set the wider to negative one. And two o, we'll set the wider the exter to negative one. Right. So these are our different combo key combos, and uh, all of these have to be sum. We need the uh, the other case, which is just do nothing. And then we need to do the same thing. But uh, for any of these release, uh, I think we can do this. Uh, we'll set the directions to zero. So we actually have to handle a horizontal and vertical different. So this, these two guys set the y direction to zero um and these guys set the x direction to zero so this is ao and 9e uh but this is actually kind of a problem right because uh if i hold one direction and then press another direction and that like release if there's like some going to be some debouncing period in there and we're going to get some like shitty behavior where uh if i'm still holding left and i let go of right that will actually set the state to zero so i should actually check uh depending on which way we're moving i should only set it to zero uh if i should only set it to zero if we're already going in that direction so for 9, 1, that is W. So if self.state.wider is equal to 1 already, then we set to 0. Otherwise, we do nothing. And here, we're going to have to do the same thing for 9F. But uh, this is negative 1. And we're going to have to do the same thing for X as well. So this is A, which is positive direction, which is 9E. And D is negative, so this is A, 0, negative 1. Okay. Uh, then we have to do nothing in all the other cases. Okay, so now we have that, and now we can say that our, uh, our movement is now the X direction times the x velocity and the same thing for y direction as f2 times y velocity um we get rid of this like bouncing ball velocity stuff uh instead we're gonna have to clip it instead of like saying like we turn around when we hit the edge we just like don't move if we hit the edge is gonna be the logic here but we'll just disable that for now and let us go off screen Okay, and I think now if I like launch this and I WASD, 
I am, in fact, moving around. My keys are reversed, which is annoying. Uh, so... Let's... I wonder why... Is, like, my coordinate space backwards from what I thought? x dir times x velocity. So, d... I'm doing negative 1. Yeah, this is just backwards, so... 1e e is a... There we go, we'll just do this. Ah, shit. Um, we have to swap them down here, too. Okay, let's try that. A, S. All right, there we go. Yeah, that feels good. Sick. Okay, so... We now have, like, a... We're now handling input, like, more in a more complex way. Now, obviously, like, the way we've implemented this is shit, right? Like, having to map out these hex codes directly is a pain. Uh, but that's okay for now. We'll live with it. Um, okay. So, comment dash M, and we'll say, uh, moving ball with arrow, with WASDA. And now we can start trying to, like, generate some sort of uh, game out of this. So let's move these notes into here in our input processing. We'll have to make like an enum for these later, but that's fine. Um, so this was at around uh, 37 minutes into the stream. And let's start looking at a uh, brick picker. So that's this game where you have like the paddle on the bottom and you have a ball and it bounces around and you have to like clear the bricks. Right, so you have this paddle, it moves back and forth, it, the ball bounces, it hits a brick and it bounces back down. Easy peasy. Uh, so let's start with like a paddle. Um, so the paddle is going to be like a rectangle and it's going to like come from some position. So probably we're going to have like in here, our state's going to have like paddle position. And this is going to be only on the X axis because the Y axis is going to be fixed. Uh, so we'll do this in normalized space again. We'll say that the uh, the paddle y is going to be, uh, I think it goes top left is 0, bottom right is 1. So it's going to be like maybe like, let's say like 80% of the way down the screen. Uh, so f32 is equal to 30, 0.8. Um... Here we go. So we put in paddle position. And he's going to start at 0 0.5. Um, so we're going to draw the paddle. And he's going to be a rectangle. So we're just going to say uh, for y in 0 to paddle in. Let's see. Let min x is going to be the paddle position. Uh, so self dot state paddle position minus uh, paddle width over two uh, and the max is going to be the same thing but plus uh, the min y is going to be uh, paddle y minus paddle height over two and the max is going to be the same thing, but plus. So these are divide signs. This has to be 2.0. And now I have to define paddle width and paddle height. And so this is going to be like, what, 0 0.01? Or maybe 0 0.02. And the height is going to be like, maybe the width is going to be 0 0.1 actually. I'm just kind of guessing. 
and the height is going to be 0 0.02. That seems reasonable. Um, now we're going to say uh, for y and min y to max y, for x and min x to max x, uh, we're going to just draw the pixel. So we have to make a color. So we'll make it white for now. So one, one, one for white on all, all RGB. Um, these guys have to be converted back to integers. Uh, so as U32. Um, and then these also have to be clamped to the range 0 to 1. Uh, yeah. Because they could go, the paddle could go off the edge of the screen a little bit. Like if maybe, I I guess we have to account for that. And if it went off the edge of the screen, then our U32 would be invalid, etc. So, there we go. Um, cool. And then here, we'll draw the paddle in our... Uh, we'll just do it here for now. And we'll cargo run. So we should see a white paddle somewhere on like the bottom of the screen. We see nothing, which is a problem. Uh, let's change our heights to make make sure that we've got everything right. So the paddle width, uh, we'll change the height to 1, so that that should be like enough to actually have some pixels in it. Still nothing. Interesting. Um, so let's print line min y... And are the Y, let's just print each pixel we're trying to draw. Just for sanity. Uh, and we're not printing, any, we're not drawing anything. So why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? Uh, okay, so this is not to be an async function, first of all. Um, cargo run. Yeah, something's wrong. Um, let's see. Who is getting stuck? So we're just going to start logging some stuff. Just to see how far we're getting into the loop. We are, in fact, running everything. And maybe we're just getting stuck in the pause state. No, the ball's still moving actually. So it's just the paddle's not being drawn at all. Uh, which I'm having trouble understanding because the draw paddle thing is called. Oh, maybe our min, y, our min and max are problems. Uh, so we'll say min, x, max, x. We'll just draw them all. Min, max, min, max. And we'll say min, x, max, x, min, y, max, y. Zero, 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 zero. Okay. So that'll do it. Uh Oh, I'm an idiot. So these as these need to be converted into like screen space. So these need to be multiplied by self.frame buffer width. And these need to be multiplied by uh self.frame buffer height. Um as a 32. There you go. No multiplication between U32 and F32, so these guys actually have to be cast in brackets, I guess. Like this. Am I high? What's it? What doesn't it like? No implementation for 
U32 times F32. But there is no U32. Oh. Oh, oops. Brackets are in the wrong spot. So uh, we need to do this multiplication in here. There we go. Hard to run. Okay, so we are, in fact, drawing the paddle. Let's get these prints out here to get to speed this up. I don't know why it's flickering. That's weird. It shouldn't be. Um... Have we made a mistake somehow? So... Oh, it's because our draw circle uh, clears the screen. So let's just nuke this guy for now. Um, right, because we're not actually drawing a circle. We're drawing uh, the whole screen with a single circle in it. There we go. Okay, so we have our paddle. Solid. And uh, now what we have to do is we want to like adjust the, the parameters. That so looks kind of reasonable, so... Let's see, paddle there looks, maybe we can make it like a little thicker, like maybe 0 0.02. The width seems pretty good. Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So git commit dash M drawing brick breaker paddle. Okay. So now when we handle input uh we need to adjust the paddle position so uh let's make some names for these nasty var variables uh these like all these hex codes so we'll say enum uh key code which almost certainly will end up living somewhere else uh but we'll say like w Hmm, w down is equal to 0, 6, 1, 1. I guess these are constants, actually. And these are u8s. And this is w up. And this is 0, 6, 9, 1. Uh, let's start just... Uh... Okay. So const a down is this one. We have the same thing, a up, but it's this one. Oopsies. There we go. This is uh, a up. Uh, then we have, I wonder if you can like automatically do this. This is like const s down is a u8 equal to this guy and then we copy paste delete this join do this and change down to uh up damn we were close it would have been cool if that macro applied nicely but Okay, we'll just do it by hand again. So u8, delete the word, equals, semicolon, enter, copy, paste, down goes to up. And this gets replaced with this guy. And we make them big words. There we go. And the last space isn't used right now, so we'll just comment it out. And now we can uh, replace these keys and ball movement with uh, some uh, a down sets the what self dot state paddle velocity or direction uh, is equal to one if we get a up we set it to zero if the current state is one Uh, we do the same thing for 
D. This should be D actually here, not A. And this is just going to be with negative 1. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the velocity, the velocity of the ball. So we're going to say that the uh, paddle dir is a I8. That could be one of three values. And our initial paddle dir is 0. And then in our physics loop, we'll say uh, if the paddle dir is... I guess we just apply, we, we say self.paddle paddle position is plus equal self.state.paddle dir as f2 times paddle velocity. There we go. And here we can set paddle velocity to like, I don't know, whatever the ball velocity was. Okay. If I run now, do I have, like, paddle movement on A and D? Yes, except we never clear the screen. So let's quickly do a frame buffer clear as well. So self.clear clear screen. And that's a function. It's not async. Uh... He does just like a for y in self dot frame buffer dot height and an x in frame buffer width. Uh, he pre computes the color for of zero for background color. Uh, so it's this zero zero zero, and he says uh, set pixel y x color okay try to run we take a look and we have paddle movement now he does not clamps so we need to fix that uh so we say if state paddle self dot state dot paddle position is greater than uh what the width um, 1.0 minus paddle width over 2. Uh, we'll say, we have to actually make a variable for this. We'll say, like, the max paddle position is 1.0 minus paddle width over 2. And the min is paddle position over 2. Right? Because we have, like, half the width of the paddle is cannot be uh so like the because we have the center of the paddle as the position and we don't want the edge going over the right side so or the other edge going over the left side and zero to one is the range of our screen um and so we can just say here that if uh self dot state dot paddle position is greater than max paddle pause uh Oh, I guess we can actually get crazy at the ear. We can say self state paddle position dot clamp. Nice. Min to max. Nice. Okay. Now when I run this, I should be able to hold right here. And oh, I have to assign this. And I think somewhere else I had some clamps in here, which are fine. Okay. So there, he... Goes to the left until he hits the wall. Goes to the right until he hits the wall. Very nice. Boom. Boom. We've got the first pieces of a game here. Okay. So, now probably what do we want to do? We want to add a ball. We want to add the ball. Um. So, in our physics... Uh... Hold on. What are we going to do? We're going to update the paddle position. So this is actually going to be called uh, update paddle position. And all of this actually only works on two variables. So maybe we split that out into like a free function just because it makes it like clear what's ha what's being updated in this section. Uh, so we'll say update paddle or paddle physics, I guess we'll say. 
or yeah, update paddle position. And this takes in the uh, two floats. So we'll have the paddle position as an F32 and the paddle dir. And this is just going to be a, a non-mutable reference. And here we just take all of this stuff we were before, we move it in here, and we move some selves. Yep, uh, this is actually a U8, an I8. Uh, this needs to be dereferenced. This also needs to be dereferenced. I guess we didn't take this in by reference, so this doesn't need to be dereferenced. Uh, we move some of these guys. There we go. So now our physics is update paddle position. He takes in paddle position by mute reference, mutable reference, and paddle direction. Okay. And now we can start looking at like a ball, right? So we can say a uh, ball position is so it starts in F32. His ball velocity is maybe a vector of two floats. Um, and we actually do want to track this as a velocity because the angle, like where, like the ball might eventually end up, uh, having difference in like direction vector, uh, based off of like where it hits the paddle. Uh, we probably actually want this to be like a direction, not a velocity because the, the ball is probably going to end up speeding up as we uh play the game as the game progresses so keeping the direction independent will make it will make it easy to just multiply the direction by the length by the speed later um for now we'll just have a const ball velocity and we'll make the same as the paddle velocity just for fun and we have to initialize these so the initial ball position is just going to be like uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Right, because it's going to be in the center of the screen. So this actually has to be uh, after 2, 2 for x, y. And maybe we actually create like a pause 2D struct just so that we can use these more nicely. There we go. Uh, Maybe we call this Vec2D, not Vec2D, uh, because Vec is overloaded as, um, Vector is overloaded. Yeah, whatever, we'll call it Pause2D, or maybe, Pause2D is, like, too specific. It would be nice to, like, what what's a name for, like, uh, I just have two numbers. Right, because, like, I don't want, like, point, ah, uh, whatever. Whatever, we'll use pause to be for now, and we'll figure out a name later if we need to. Uh, so we make an implementation. So we can construct these guys easily, which is just a new that takes an x, y, and returns a pause to d. And we just say, uh, here's my struct, please, like this. And then here I can set my ball position as uh, pause to d new... 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and my direction. Uh, yeah, he can have the same, he can just start moving down to the right immediately. That seems fine. Okay. So every frame, we're going to update the ball. And he's going to take in the uh, ball... He's going to take the ball direction. He might change the ball direction, right, if he hits something. He's going to take in the uh, ball position. Uh, and he's going to take in the paddle position as well. But he's all, he doesn't need the paddles 
position as mutable reference because he's only do using the paddle position to check uh, check if we've collided with the paddle. Okay. So let's make this function now. So he, what does he do? Uh, this is a position, ball position is a mute F32. Ball direction, also a mute F32. And paddle position is just an F32. Okay, so what's he do? Uh, the position just continues with the direction times velocities for now. So we'll say a ball position equals or is increased by the ball direction, which is not a mute F32. This is a pause 2D. These are actually both pause 2Ds. Oops. All of these are pause 2Ds. Okay. Uh, so ball position is increased by the ball direction times uh, the velocity of the ball. So ball velocity. Uh, so we have to implement like these like addition things and multiplication with floats. Uh, so let's say, uh, impl core ops multi mul mul for, and the right hand side is a float or pause to be. Uh, we say that uh, the output is myself. And I just say that the self dot x times equals RHS and y is increased by the right height multiplied by RHS. And we return it. Great. So now this multiplication should work. And I wonder if I can derive like add and mall and stuff. Probably not. Uh, so let's implement for ops add uh, for pause 2D to pause 2D. Um, <clears throat> Oops. Okay. And here he just returns self and he says self dot x is plus equal to rjs dot x and y is increased by y. And this is to be mutable. And this output is pause to be cargo check. Um one ninety seven, please. We've got a comma here. Uh, paddle position is in fact a float because it's not a 2D position actually because we only have a uh, X axis. Uh, but maybe in this case it makes more sense to use this as a pause 2D and we'll just construct a new one. So the X position is the self.state.paddle position and the Y position is a uh, paddle Y. There we go. Uh, like this. Okay. Uh, this guy should be a reference now. Okay, we're close. So, cannot use plus equals. So we have to add, uh, add a sign. Can we derive add a sign maybe? I wonder. Add a sign rest. Um, nope, we actually just have to implement it by hand. That sucks. Uh, so, impl add a sign for pause to be. And he has add a sign that takes in himself. And we just say star self is equal to self plus. RHS. Um, maybe we should 
implement add in terms of add assign actually. So we'll say uh, star, star self is equal to uh, self dot self dot x plus equals rhs dot x and self dot y is plus equals rhs dot y. And then here we can say uh, self plus equals rhs. There we go. That looks nicer. Parker check. Do we compile? We are close, so 258. Okay, there we go. I think that this works. So we update the Paul position. Oh, no, cargo check. What's he like? Ball direction times ball vel cannot multiply pause 2D by F32 because it's a mutable reference. So what if we multiply uh, the dereference version? And I guess we need to implement copy here. So that these are easily easy to like copy around and stuff. These like mathematical expressions will work nicely on them. Okay, so ball position plus equals ball direction times ball bell. Great. Uh we probably also want a like clamp to screen probably function. So we'll say clamp. Uh Actually, we can just say ball position dot x dot clamp. Is there like a clamp in place? I guess not. Ball position dot x clamp to zero to one, and the y position is also clamp zero to one. And in reality, uh, if we go went out of bounds, we probably actually want to invert the direction. So, if ball position dot x is greater than one point oh. Uh, ball position dot x is equal to 1.0 and the ball position uh, dot ball direction dot x times equals negative 1. Um, I guess this has this should be uh, yeah, that's fine. I was going to say that, like, we should make sure that we're going in that direction, but in reality, we should never hit this case in, unless we are. So we'll just say assert uh, that ball direction dot x is greater than 1.0 at this point. Or is greater than 0, sorry. We'll do the same thing for y. And we have to do the same thing on the lower edge of the screen. So... Here we say uh, if less than one point, if ball position is less than zero, assert uh, the ball direction is less than zero, ball position x is equal to zero, and the ball direction is multiplied by negative one. Great. And the same thing for y, uh, which is probably easier to do by copy pasting this guy and replacing x with y. So y, 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 y. These clamps are gone. And. I think if we run this now, we should see a ball moving around the screen, except we don't draw it. So we have to draw the ball, obviously. Uh, which can be self-draw ball or something. Uh, maybe, again, I actually prefer non-member uh, functions. So we'll say draw ball, and he takes in the ball position here. Uh... And what do we do here? We say for y, I guess we find like the bounds. We find the bounds of this guy. So we do have a ball radius anywhere. Ball radius is going to be 0.01. I don't know, 02 for now. We're just making something. Uh, 01, sure. Uh, we say that the bounds are is going to be the ball position dot x minus ball rad right the radius of the ball uh a local variable with name is ball position did i still wrong ball position there we go uh the max x is the same thing but plus and we do the same thing for y so this is y y y y and then we say uh, for 
y in min y to max y for x in min x to max x. Uh, now, for now, I'm just going to do draw square, but later I'm going to convert this into a circle. So we'll say uh, we also want to convert these into screen space. So, in, or sorry, like a uh, pixel space instead of normalized screen space. So we'll say these guys are multiplied by uh, self dot. Uh, we'll call this a fb width is a f32. I guess we just take in the frame buffer here. Uh, as a mute frame buffer. Okay, so these need to be multiplied by frame buffer width as f32 as u32. And in reality, we're doing this often. So maybe we should split that out into its own function, but fuck it. Uh, these guys do the same thing, but for height. So this is uh, times frame buffer height as f32 as you could do. Great. Now we can just say a uh, frame buffer set pixel yx color, where color is going to be white for now. So col let color is equal to frame buffer convert color 1.0, 1.0, Great. Now I have to draw the ball. So we say here in our draw loop somewhere, uh, self or draw ball mute self dot. No, self state ball position and self the frame buffer. Great. Great, 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 great. Now if I run this, do we see a ball bouncing around? Hey! Not bad. Now it's kind of annoying that he's going only into the corners. And it's also annoying that he doesn't collide with the paddle. So let's uh, let's calculate with if he collides with the paddle. So we'll say uh, if ball position uh, dot x is equal to paddle position or is between so is greater than Paddle position dot x minus paddle width. Or uh, I guess we just want to do like rectangle intersection. So rect intersects. And we'll say uh, I guess we need to like have a rectangle type. So this is gonna have like a center. Center pause 2D and a uh, size, and we'll also call this a pause 2D, even though pause isn't the right word for this. And A is going to be erect, B is going to be erect, and maybe this is going to be our reference, and this is going to be a boolean output. And how do we know if these like two rectangles intersect? Uh, you have rectangle A. And you have rectangle B. And what are my options here? I can intersect like this. I can intersect like this. I can intersect like this. And so this is like the hardest case probably. So we have like what? If the right edge is completely, is if the right edge is less than the left edge, then it's not intersection, it's intersecting. And I think we can probably just say those are the only cases, right? If like my top is below my bottom, Like, okay, if I draw all the non-intersecting cases, I think that they're just this, 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 and this, right? Anything that's not like these edges aren't overlapping uh, would be an intersection. So I can say, uh, uh, let's make like a way to get the edges from this. So we'll say, uh, right is equal to takes himself and he returns a f32 and the right side is just the 
self.center.x plus self.center.size dot x divided by two. Uh, oops, self.size x over two. Um, there we go. We do the same thing for left, but there's a minus in here. And we do the same thing for up and bad down. So this is top, bottom, and the center y plus y is the top. Nope, minus y is the top because the minus, our screen space is like zero at the top, one at the bottom. Okay. And I think we just have to say, uh, so if the a right is greater than b, or the a left is greater than b right, we're not intersecting, or uh, a dot b dot right, or b dot left is greater than a dot right, or we have a dot top, so that's the lower side. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting lost again. So here I'm saying that if my left side is greater than my right side. So let's just draw this out. A, B. So if my, so that's this case. If my left side of A is greater than my right side of B, we don't intersect. If my right side of B is greater than my, my left side of B is greater than my eight si right side of A, we also don't intersect. Here we're going positive down. So if we have the top side of B is greater than the bottom side, or the top side of A is greater than the bottom side of B. And we just invert it, so B, A. These are all the cases where we're not intersecting, I think. And so we just invert this. And that should be the cases where we're intersecting. Which now means that we should be able to say, uh, let ball collision box is the uh, center is the ball position and the size is the ball radius twice, right? So we have pause to D new ball radius, ball radius. And that should define like a collision rectangle. And we'll say uh, paddle rect is a rect that has the uh, center as the paddle position. And the size is a, uh, hold on, ball radius times two. It needs to be ball radius times two to turn it into diameter because the size is x and y full length, not from the center. And here we have the paddle width and paddle height. And now we can just say, uh, if the ball, if rect intersects, ball collision and paddle rect, we need to invert the y direction of the ball. I'm pretty sure that's it. So we'll say uh, ball direction dot y times equals name one. And later this will turn into something where we like uh, calculate how far we want to move into, uh, like but based off of how far we are on the paddle, we might shoot in different angles, but for now we'll just invert y. Um, We need to add some dot zeros in here to make them floats. And if I cargo run release, let's see if I can like, okay, we're close. Uh, we definitely are detecting the ball. Okay, so there's something there fucked up. Specifically on the edge. If my paddle's on the edge and I'm like holding my paddle into the edge, that seems to cause problems. Oh, well, maybe not. Also, we are not pushing ourselves out of the paddle. And, okay, there's like a problem where 
it's getting like it's get it's y position i think is like maybe inverted in some cases yeah there's something something there rec bottom is using x it should be y damn you are quick man you are quick Holy shit, good catch. Thank you. Alright. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's a little bouncy. Bounce. Alright. If he gets and if he ends up inside the paddle, we have to push him out. But other than that, it's not too bad. Yeah. Sick. Okay. Very nice. And now all we need to do is we need to make the bricks. And we can... There. Yeah, nice. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, if we're in the paddle... Uh... We just need to make sure that the, uh... Ball is pushed out of it. So we'll say that the ball position... Um... Let's see. His we'll just push him y out y ways, and he'll say uh, is equal to paddle rec the what paddle position plus paddle height uh, plus paddle height over two. So just every time he hits the paddle, we just force him to the top of it. Uh, which seems reasonable to me. So what does he like here? This is a pause 2D, so this needs to be paddle position Y. And let's see how that feels. Uh, oops, I think I'm forcing him to the bottom of the paddle. Yep, definitely. So, minus. And there we go. So if he hits the bottom, he just goes straight through. And if he hits the top, there we go. Nice. Oh my god, it's so hard to... Yeah, okay. That feels okay. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Okay. So here we can say, uh, paddle and ball control is done by 123-ish. And now let's add some bricks. Uh, and this is like no angle. Or so we might add an angle later. Okay. So I guess uh, we're gonna need some sort of representation of bricks. And there's probably gonna be like a grid of them. And at some point we're going to have to think about uh, deleting them. And so the question becomes, do we want to just have like a, a grid uh, that checks, like we could either represent this as an array, like a 2D array of bricks with presence in them, or we could start with a list of bricks and delete them as the game moves forward. Um, I think I like the second thing from an implementation perspective, right? If we had like vec bricks, uh, we have like a vector of positions maybe uh, but that's really nice because uh, for intersection checks I can just loop over every brick do my intersection check with the ball and see if it works but if I have like uh, uh, yeah that's fine uh, the other thing you could do is you could like derive the position from indexes so you could actually just get away with like bricks as vec u size. And then each of these bricks gets placed as uh, like some multiplier. Uh, but I think I'll just initialize them with, for now, I'll just do bricks is a vector of positions. And uh, I'll just be aware that I think this is like not memory efficient. Like you could, you could do better, but I don't care. Right, I'm just gonna say that out loud so that people don't roast me for it later. Um, we need to use alloc vec. Uh, I guess in reality, I was going to say that you you could, you know how many bricks there are going to be, but that's only if you were going to have all the bricks there all the time. 
Uh, so when we start the game, we're going to create our bricks. We're just going to say uh, bricks is gen bricks. And then down at the bottom, we can say gen bricks takes in nothing and generates a vector. Pause 2D. Uh, and for now, let's just return a, a single brick. So we'll say let mute ret is equal to this, ret, and ret.push. We'll just make like a brick in the middle or something just for testing. Uh, so this is a pause 2D new 0 0.50. 0. I guess I can put it towards the top. Uh, this is maybe center X top Y. And then in our physics, we check if we collide with a brick. So here we take in self bricks, uh, which is part of the state and the ball position. And now we have to write this update bricks function, which takes in the bricks as a mutable vector of positions and the ball position, which is what a pause 2D probably. Yep. Okay. Um, so actually, we might also have, we have also we also have taken the ball direction here uh, because we might have to invert the ball direction if it's a brick. And I don't know why I just typed that. That's not how you define a variable in Rust. This ball direction is a mute. Uh, pause two D again. And so here we have to take in mute self dot state dot ball direction. Okay. And so what's like the implementation of this guy? So he's going to say uh, for brick in bricks, uh, if the ball collides, so we'll say let ball wrecked. Uh, we've we're gonna we've already done this in one place, so we're gonna have to pull that out somewhere. Where did we create our like ball collision box? Here, uh, where do I want to set this? I guess let's just say like function ball collision box takes in the ball position as a pause 2D and returns a rect. And that's just this. Um, so the ball rect is the ball collision box or the given position. Uh, so we just do the same thing here, ball position. And so we say if the ball rect intersects with the brick, so we need the brick collision box. So we say let brick box is equal to rect uh, position is the brick and the uh, size is brick size. And here we'll just make a make up a brick size. So we'll say uh, brick size or we'll say the brick width is just going to be the paddle width probably. Or probably just going to use the paddle width for this as well for the paddle size of the brick size. Um, so we say brick height is paddle height. And then here we create a pause 2D of brick width to brick height. Okay. So there we go. We can say if we intersect with the rect, uh, one thing we need to do is like log that we hit the brick. So here, uh, we actually, we should enumerate these. And the reason is uh, we can keep track of which brick we hit and then swap and pop that brick at the end. 
we also probably can think that uh, if we hit any brick, we don't have to. We we know that that's the only brick we hit on this frame. Uh, so we can just say uh, break, and we'll say here let collit uh, collision index is equal to none. But if we hit, we say uh, collision index is equal to i, and we then we say Oops, this needs to be wrapped in sum. And then we can say, if we hit a box, like this, if we hit a box, then we move it. So we'll say, uh, bricks swap remove i. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Um, and if we, hit, if we hit, we also have to invert y direction. So ball direction dot y times equals negative 1.0. All right, so let's try, oh, we have to draw the bricks, but I wonder if we can like find it in here somewhere. Who knows? Okay, let's draw the bricks. Let's draw the bricks. So to draw them, we need to take in the bricks. Uh, they're not mutable at this point, so they can come in as a slice. Um, we can take in the frame buffer because that's what we're drawing to. And then we just iterate over each brick uh, like this. And for each brick, we draw a rectangle. So I don't know if we already have a draw rectangle function. We draw, drew the paddle somewhere and that draw paddle should look very similar to this. So let's pull out a draw rectangle. So this is gonna look like draw rect and it's gonna take in a frame buffer and a rectangle. Like this. And all of these calculations come for free now other than the uh, Oh, it's close. We don't actually have like a perfect thing here. Uh, we can say uh, rect dot left clamps zero to one times frame buffer width. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we have the same thing here, rect right. Uh, this is rect top is the minimum and rect dot bottom is the maximum. Uh, these selves have to be converted into non-self references to the frame buffer. Cool. Uh, and we just need to take in the color now as well. So we'll say that the color is a reference to three F32s or something. There we go. And so this is going to be color zero, color one, and color two. And so for each brick, we're going to draw a rectangle, which is the brick rect, which we don't have. So we'll say brick box is this guy. Right. Um, the color is going to be, uh, we'll just make it like blue for now. Uh, so it's going to be 0, 0 0.0 RGB. And... Then we just say draw rect brick box color frame buffer. And we need to borrow this instead of copying him. Maybe this guy as well. Cool. Uh, draw paddle. This now is going to be replaced with draw rect. Uh, so this is the... Uh, let the paddle box is the erect that takes in the center, which is self.paddle position. And the size is going to be uh, pause 2D new paddle width paddle height. Okay. And now we can say uh, draw rect paddle box one 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 for white for the paddle and take in the 
frame buffer. Uh, there we go. Close. Uh, this is a pause 2D. That's the X position, the paddle position, the Y position is the paddle height. Nope, the paddle Y. There we go. Okay, now in our draw loop, we draw the paddle, we draw the ball, and we draw bricks. Which takes in self state bricks and the frame buffer. Okay, let's see. Card and run. Okay, so we have our brick. And if I get the ball to hit it, does it go away? Let's see. Look at that. That's so sick. That is so, so sick. Um, there's also definitely a bug where if I hit the right side, it's going over. My clamping is not working correctly. Uh. So let's fix these clamps here. So we should actually clamp, uh, this whole thing To zero and frame buffer width minus one. And that will work a little nicer. And so here we do the same thing where we clamp from uh, zero to frame buffer height minus one. There we go. Let's see if we still see it, like, clamping over the edge. We actually do. Interesting. I would think that it shouldn't. And it's actually, like, going over by quite a bit. So let's think about this again. We have rect.write times frame buffer width as F32 as a U32 clamped to frame buffer width minus one. So let's look at draw ball. Oh, draw ball isn't using draw rect right now. Uh, so let ball rect is collision, ball collision box for the uh, ball position. So like this, and then we'll say draw rect ball rect white. We want a white ball, so one, 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 and frame buffer. That explains it. Hard to run. Let's see. There we go. That's fixed it. Cool, cool. All right. So now the only thing to do is to uh, initialize a grid of bricks and see if we can play a game. So, generate bricks now. What are we going to do? We're going to loop over uh, how many Y rows. So, for Y in 0 to brick rows. And we're going to do the same thing for, for columns. Um, we're going to calculate our offsets is going to be something like uh, initial or brick top Y. Uh, plus uh, the brick height times Y, right? Uh, but it's not just gonna be brick height, it's gonna be brick height plus brick spacing. And this is going to be the same thing for X. So this is actually going to be calls. And our X offsets is going to be the brick left X plus brick width. Plus brick spacing times X. Okay. So now we just need to make these variables. So we have uh, brick top Y is going to be a float equal to like 0 0.1 or something. The brick spacing is going to be quite small, maybe like 0 0.005 or something. Uh, we're going to have what? Uh, brick 
calls is going to be like uh five or something. And brick rows is also gonna be five. And we need to make a left thing. Okay. And now we have like some like type finagling to deal with, so uh let's just run cargo checks, it'll tell me which ones. Uh this is all in float space, so uh times y as f32. There we go. Now we what create a position for the brick. So we say let brick is equal to pause 2d new y offset x offset or x offs y offs and ret dot push brick. Okay, let's see what that makes me. That does make me a grid of bricks. Uh, but I guess I kind of want them centered. Um, yeah, probably I want them centered. Uh, so how would I do that? So I have like the, the uh, size of the screen goes from uh, 0 to 1. And so really I don't need like a brick left offset. I should calculate the number of bricks times their height, times their spacing, and then like subtract that from some from the center or something. Um, so we'll say that the, what we have like const brick grid width is going to be brick width plus brick spacing. times the number of columns minus one set of brick spacing. I think that's right. I think that's right. Um, so this is going to be an F32. And brick calls just gets cast to a float here. And then the left side brick left x is equal to uh 0 0.5 minus brick grid width over 2.0 let's see it is that centered that does not look centered to me at all did i do the math wrong here so the brick grid width Brick width plus brick spacing times brick calls. That seems right to me. And the brick left being halfway in. Oh, but the uh, this is offset by, uh, this is like the center and I calculated the left side. So this needs to add in brick width over 2.0. That looks centered. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, we could do more. We could adjust the... Oh, damn, that went crazy. Uh, you could adjust the ball kind of direction based off where in the paddle it hits. And maybe increase the speed as we go. Uh, but I guess... I don't really care enough to do that. I think I've proven that uh, we can make a game. And I guess that's really most of what I want to do. I don't actually, I'm never going to play this, right? But uh, it's nice to know that we have what, like, what we need from our drivers to be able to make this. Um, obviously, right, like this is going forever. There should be like a reset. There should be a uh, like score screen. Maybe a score screen is something that is worth thinking about. It would be fun to maybe uh, in the future use this game to kind of like push some stuff, right? So we should have like, if we had like a high score screen, we would need to be able to like render fonts and we would need like storage of some form, right? Like a like and be able to like read and write to storage. So maybe I'll think about that and see if I want to implement that for next next time. That does seem like a kind of like fun thing to do next. 
Um, but yeah, I think I'm happy with where we what we did today. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you saw, you can always tune in most days at around one Pacific time. Uh, if you miss live, then you can catch up on YouTube. The YouTube is linked in the Twitch description. And if you're watching on YouTube and you want to pop in live, uh, the Twitch is linked in the YouTube description. Uh, code is available here. I'll post this in the description as well. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, catch you on the next one. Bye.